when he calls fellow citizens vermin. People make excuses for it. And I see it. I mean, look, if you're a Christian and, 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 and you, you, you care deeply about the abortion issue, I, I understand that, but, but does that mean you, you'll support somebody who seems to violate pretty much every precept of the Ten Commandments? I, I, if, 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 if you are a service member, and, 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 and you're somewhat conservative, and, and you're used to voting Republican, I can understand it, but, but somebody who, who genuinely does not believe in duty and honor and does not understand why anybody would, would sacrifice themselves on behalf of their country, why, why, why would you do that? I, if, if, if you're a Muslim, American, and, and, and you're upset about what's happening in the Middle East, why, why, why would you put your faith in somebody who passed a Muslim ban and, 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 and repeatedly suggested that somehow you weren't part of our American community? If, if you're an African American or Latino, if you're, if you're from Puerto Rico and, 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 and you see somebody who, whose values seem to indicate that you're not part of their equation, how do you think it's okay? How, how can you tell yourself it's okay as long as our side wins? And I've noticed this especially with some men who seem to think Trump's behavior is somehow a sign of strength. Uh, you know, sort of the, the macho, fake macho thing, and, you know, I, I, that's, I'm here to tell you that's not what real strength is. It never has been. Real strength's about working hard. Real strength's about taking responsibility. Real strength is about telling the truth even when it's inconvenient. Real strength is about being confident enough to treat everybody with dignity and respect. Real strength is about helping people who need it and standing up for those who can't always stand up for themselves. That is what we should want in our daughters and our sons. And that is what I want to see in the next president of the United States of America. And the good news is that you have candidates to vote for in this election who demonstrate that kind of character, who know what real strength looks like, who will set a good example and, and do the right thing and leave this country better than they found it. And Pennsylvania, that is the choice in this election. It's not just policies that are on the ballot, it's who we are and what we stand for. So whether this election is making you feel excited or scared or hopeful or frustrated or anything in between, do not sit back. Don't just hope for the best. Get off your couch and vote. Put down your phone and vote. Vote for Kamala Harris as the next president. Vote for Tim Walls as the next vice president. Vote for Bob Casey and this all incredible Pennsylvania Democratic ticket. Help your family and friends and neighbors and co-workers go to the polls. If enough of us make our voices heard, we will leave no doubt about the outcome of this election. We will leave no doubt about who we are and what America stands for. And together we will keep building a country that is more fair and more just and more equal and more free. That is our task. 
That is our responsibility. Let's go do the work. Thank you, Philadelphia. Thank you, Pennsylvania. Let's go vote. We are a nation of immigrants. But, I, so, so, somewhere in your family, somebody came from somebody else. It came, came from someplace else. We are a nation of immigrants. But we're also a nation of laws. And we have to make sure the system works the way it's supposed to, that it's orderly, that it's safe, that it's fair. But here's the thing I don't understand. If you are concerned about immigration, if you think it's a top problem, I, I, I want you to, to just ask yourself this simple question. Donald Trump, J.D. Vance, they're always talking about, well, Kamala's been vice president for four years. You know, so, so she has to take responsibility for all that, even though she wasn't actually president. Well, wasn't Donald Trump president for four years? I, that, that, somehow that's conveniently forgotten. But I haven't forgotten. If rounding up and deporting millions of people, many of them women and children, if rounding up millions of desperate people is the answer to everything, why is it that the number of undocumented immigrants was basically the same when Trump left office as when he took office? I, uh, why? Why didn't he solve this problem when he was in office? Well, I'll tell you why. Because he, didn't, he did not have a real plan. He had concepts of a plan. And it was a mean and ugly plan. And an impractical plan. You know what would actually help bring order to the border and fix our immigration system? A bipartisan deal that Kamala Harris, as vice president, supported even though it was written by one of the most conservative Republicans in Congress, and Congress was all set to go. And then Donald Trump called up the Republicans in Congress and said, well, you can't vote for that. Because he believed that it was better not to solve the problem so he could use the issue in the election. So he could you engage in fear mongering? Vote. The, I, I, we do not need a president who will make problems worse just to make his politics better. We need a president who actually cares about solving problems, not exploiting problems, about making your life better, not just making you angry and resentful. We need somebody like Kamala Harris who will be focused on doing the right thing, rolling up her sleeves, getting stuff done. And to help her do it, she's going to need a Senate full of public servants like